I'd like to just add some further context to my videos uh, about the Buggy 298 documentary from, um, yeah, that made on this Monday. I'd like to just add some further context. So, one thing I'd like to discuss was, um, uh, yes, uh, my dad, he was a freaking, um, he was the youngest Commonwealth attorney in Kentucky history. He became a Commonwealth attorney at the age of 25, and uh, he always used to be written up in the Lexington Herald Leader for being a star Commonwealth attorney. Uh, he graduated from Commonwealth, he graduated from the University of Kentucky Law School back in 1960s. I guess the middle of the 1960s, and he's, it was either one, two, or three in his class. He was a member of the Order of the Co-op, um, and he, uh, yes, became the Commonwealth Attorney in the state of Kentucky in 19, in the 1960s, uh, 1968, I think, when he was 25 years old, and was Commonwealth Attorney until 1980, when, um, due to certain behaviors, he was beaten by, uh, uh, an 87 year old man race um, he was beaten by an 87 year old man in the race for Commonwealth Attorney so uh, one of those my mom says because he took another woman to the uh, the presidential um, the presidential um, celebration in Louisville and was on camera so that was one of the activities that uh, my mom my mom swears cost him the Commonwealth Attorney election well, anyway, I grew up and um, I always expected I would inherit a lot of money and, um, you know, because my dad, dad been a big fancy lawyer and, um, uh, oh, also when my dad was in law school, there was another law student who said my mom looked uh, like Grace Kelly. If you, I don't know if you know who Grace Kelly is, but she became the Princess of Monaco and was in several, um, Several Alfred Hitchcock movies, uh, Rear Window, and um, I think Dial M for Murder. She was considered one of the most beautiful women in the 1960s and 50s. Well, anyway, uh, when my mom was in law school, there was one of um, the other students. Uh, sorry, when my dad was in law school, there was one of the other students who compared my mom's looks to Grace Kelly and said she looked a lot like my mom looked a lot like Grace Kelly. So. Anyway, I grew up, and um, I always thought I would inherit a lot of money. Uh, one of the reasons was, um, of course, my dad being a fancy lawyer, but my childhood was far from charmed. Um, Thanksgiving Day in 1982, for example, my dad was drunk, uh, watching CNN all night, and about snapped my arm in half the next morning when I tried to um, prevent him from injuring my mom severely, who uh, had a, several... Um, like she had a really bad back due to beatings he'd given and stuff over the years. Anyway, um, but I still thought I would inherit a lot of money. The 19, uh, and I graduated, uh, most likely to succeed for my class in high school. And, but I didn't develop many social skills growing up. Um, because, as my mom says, uh, one of the reasons I had to stay in my room a lot and stay separate from other people was um, I had... I mentioned it before, childhood asthma, but the other one was, um, you know, my, uh, when my dad was home, he wasn't exactly the same person he was at work, and he was liable to go on a rage, and uh, I know, I can remember a few times he tried this, and um, he could either, you know, beat the hell out, beat me to death, or um, he could, he, uh, yes, uh, he could, well, um, for example, back in eighth grade, I remember I was heading into eighth grade, and he uh, he wanted me to stand in front of him while he taught me this knife trick. And what he wanted me to do, uh, well, what, what, he wanted me to stand in front of him while he had a butcher knife in his hand, and he was going to um, shove the butcher knife right at me. So that was one, uh, an unsettling evening back in eighth grade. Um. Anyway, yes, I had to stay in my room a lot as a child and didn't develop a lot of social skills. 
uh, when my dad was home because he was kind of a different person at home than he was at work, you know. Um, we bought all one thing. Well, uh, still though, I thought up until the time my dad died in uh, 1996, I would inherit a lot of money when he died. And my parents, they got divorced after about 30 years of marriage and my dad being abusive and cheating uh, a lot in 19, the early 1990s. It was divorce. It stretched on for a few years. Um, and still my mom didn't get anything due to Kentucky's no-fault divorce laws. But I always thought I was going to inherit something from my dad and basically wound up just inheriting a penny when he died. So uh, I was going to use my inheritance to get over a beautiful young lady into my life. And never worked out. Uh, then other things happened between... Uh, 19, late 1990s now that kept that from happening. Uh, so, that died March 8, 1998, when he was 55. Um, mainly probably due to substance abuse and other things. Got in a fight with two bikers in a bar in Lexington and Hooters sometime shortly before he died and got hit in the chest with a lead pipe, so I think that probably had something to do with his demise. But, uh, over the years, I've, even though he died, even though before he died, my dad said, hey, uh, Ed, if I didn't think I could make it, I'd leave you a, a freaking inheritance. And also, he was going to marry a beautiful woman who somebody else, uh, later murdered downtown if his wife hadn't straightened out, he told me a month before he died. But, um, yeah, uh, but, uh, he died of that massive heart attack, March 8, 1998. I think we had a big winter storm we had in February 4th and how he had to take care of his parents. And uh, he did do a good job even taking care of me and my, my mom. Was, even though he was married to somebody else, he got all his money during uh, the winter storm of February 4th that knocked all the pine trees down and uh, killed the power around here for about, uh, for some sections of Jackson County, Kentucky, up to about six weeks. So, trying to... Um, Go over to uh, provide a little more context. Oh, uh, when I was a senior in high school, we went on a senior trip to um, Orlando, Florida. And at the time, I used to average, oh, going back to Florida, an average of five, every, you know, once every five years. But, and on the last day, it was a really enjoyable trip when I was there in 1991, even without, on senior trip, even without my lack of social skills. So, uh, you know, the kids like for me to sing uh, Guns N' Roses knocking on heaven's doorway for them. Uh, you know, knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. You know, uh, it's like BJ on w, uh, 98.1 at the time, it's 100.1 now. In Lexington, 97.1 in Somerset, who originally sang it that way, but I picked it up and thought maybe I could uh, get a few laughs out of the fellow uh, seniors on the trip to Disney World in 1991. Well, I told myself on my last day, oh, uh, something I remember from that trip was one night we ran into a bunch of other high schoolers, and um, there was a cute little brunette who was with the uh, other high schoolers, they sat in, uh, with the other class from a different school, and she was talking about how all her friends had um, nicknames for us students from Jackson County that they'd seen, and she said that her nickname for, or their nickname for me, was the Tin Man because I didn't have a heart. I would um, kind of suggest listening either to um, America's Tin Man or, um, or there's a really good... Uh, version of Broken Needle uh, on the pure, by Marilyn Manson by the Pure Music Factory that has kind of a Tin Man story. I think, I think taken, scenes were taken from the movie Tin Man um, that, uh, mini series that used to be on, that was on sci-fi. Uh, and yes, anyway, um, I guess the Tin Man is someone I've kind of always been because I didn't have a heart. <laughs> But uh, she said that was what their class called me, the Tin Man. Anyway, I enjoyed that senior trip, and I was like, 
Well, you know, uh, I'm, on the last day, I was like, I'm really sorry to leave here in Orlando, Florida, but I'll be back in five years since I'd average going down there every five years. And uh, then the big divorce came in the 1990s, and uh, my dad's death came in the 1990s and didn't inherit any money that I kind of thought I had was going to since about 1972, going out the year I was born. I'm turning 51 on December 26, uh, 19, well, December 26, 2023. And didn't, uh, so all those things happened in the 1990s. Now, actually, me and my mom and my sister did go to, um, Myrtle Beach about six years in a row back then uh, instead, but you know, Myrtle Beach is not the same as going to Orlando, so I told myself that I was going to go to be back in Orlando within five years of 1991, let's say a senior trip, and it's been over, oh gosh, uh, 32 years since then, and I still haven't been back to Orlando, Florida, the only time I've been out of the state of Kentucky was when I got lost going to... Um, Indiana, uh, no, going to Louisville to see a Rod Stewart concert. She was, he was my f mom's favorite musician. Uh, it was Rod Stewart and Cindy Walker in 2017. And then I uh, also finally saw Kiss in 20, yeah, uh, 2018 on the last, on their End of the Road tour. They've been on that tour a long time. Uh, almost about ready for it to end. But, um, Yes, uh, finally saw Kiss after wanting to since the 1970s in 2018, so uh, I went all those years, 32 years without going to Disney World, and I was watching that Dougie 2988 documentary, the part he starts talking about, um, how he wants to, or how he hadn't, how he was, hadn't been to, um, New York City with a girl who looked like a supermodel or had been to, you know, Disney World with a girl who looked like a supermodel, and uh, I just don't like fat women or obese, um, old-looking women, uh, you know, I would really like to find a uh, hot woman to go to um, New York City with, or, uh, you know, a girl who could actually be a Disney princess look like to finally go back to Disney World after 32 years. So, or however many it's going to be, th going on 33. So, I just wanted to add some further context to the videos from another day. Well, hope you're having a good evening, and it's, uh, it says it's early, in the, uh, about one fifty a.m. or something here. It's going on the witching hour of the soul at 3 a.m. when most people die. If you've seen the Ray Bradbury and Disney movie, uh, Something Wicked This Way Comes. Uh, 1982, <laughs> the year of the dogma and alleged dogman attacks in um, Grand Rivers, uh, land between the lakes, according to people who believe in such things. So yes, I would like to find a, you know, a girl who um, is really uh, good looking to go to New York or uh, or uh, back to Disney World with. I don't want to go with a obese or fat, or, you know, and actually, uh, sorry, maybe a little racist, but I like white women too, so, uh, I could date a girl as white as Jenna Ortega, said on one of my Facebook posts, and you can, um, if you ever feel like you can, uh, check out my Facebook posts, Edward Hieronymus, or Ed Hieronymus, uh, yes, no, uh, got a lot of stuff on there, I may explain many things, so, um, Yes, just wanted to add that context, and uh, I hope you're having a wonderful day and a great evening. Bye for now.